Uh, science! Hey there, and welcome to Science This Week. We're gonna start uh, under the water. A 500-year-old shipwreck has been found in the Baltic Sea. A team of marine biologists uh, and archaeologists have discovered this ancient boat at the very bottom of the Baltic Sea. Now, the Baltic Sea is the sea that is bordered by Finland and Sweden and Germany and Poland and all of those countries around that around that little area. Dr. Rodrigo Pacio Ruiz, a maritime archaeologist and deep sea archaeological expert at the University of Southampton, said this ship is contemporary to the times of Christopher Columbus and Leonardo da Vinci, yet it demonstrates a remarkable level of preservation after 500 years at the bottom of the sea, thanks to the cold, brackish waters of the Baltic. It's almost like it sank yesterday, masts in place and hull intact. Still on the main deck is an incredibly rare find. The tender boat used a ferry crew to and from the ship, leaning against the main mast. It is a truly astonishing sight. From the archaeological survey, it is believed that the shipwreck could date between the late 15th century and early 16th century, and that would place it earlier than a few of the more famous shipwrecks that we found, the warship Mars, which sank in an explosion in the First Battle of Oland in 1564, um, also Henry VIII's Mary Rose, which uh, was around 1545, and the Swedish warship Vasa, which was around 1628. And those are all famous shipwrecks that this actually predates. And I'm going to be showing some video from the subcam of this shipwreck, and it's haunting that just to see this in person. And the shipwreck was first detected by the Swedish Maritime Administration as a side-scan sonar target in 2009, but it was earlier this year and as part of the Nord Stream 2 survey work carried out by MMT that the shipwreck was identified as to have great archaeological and historical significance. This is a very important discovery as it potentially predates the larger and more powerful ships involved later in the Northern Seven Years' Wars. That was a war between 1563 and 1570. It was a battle fought between the Kingdom of Sweden and a coalition of Norway, Denmark, and Poland, the Baltic being the main maritime battleground. This was a period of very great importance, which defined the path of modernization of these Scandinavian nations. Opposite to the scattered remains of the warship Mars, which was actually exploded in battle, this shipwreck lays practically intact, as you can see, in the bottom of the Baltic seabed. Her hull structure is preserved from keel to the top deck with all of her masts and some elements of the standing rigging still in place, including the bowsprit and decorated transom stern, as well as the wooden capstan, all in place. Plus, that tender boat, still on the main deck which was used to ferry that crew to and from the ship. She was also carrying swivel guns on the main deck, and some of them are still in the gun ports. Although this ship is smaller in size to the warship Mars, this wreck can be described as very similar to the remains of the Gribsunden wreck also found in Sweden, but dating to the late 14th century and early 15th century, and which remains are very scant. This unknown ship is probably the best preserved early modern period shipwreck ever to be discovered in recent times. And it's so cool to find stuff like this because it's like lightning in a bottle. Why was it preserved so well when we found stuff from the same period with very, very little remains still intact? And this, as they said, looks like it literally sank yesterday. And uh, it's really cool when we get the chance to find something like that, especially as an archaeologist who's, you know, just looking for hints of anything to find an almost intact ship is so exciting. And uh, that's just the beginning, because now that we're really starting to dive into looking at it and, and analyzing it, the data that we're going to get from it could reveal some stuff we never knew about that time period. Really, really interesting. Moving on this week, we're going into space, obviously. A topic that uh, we love to talk about on this show is um, different missions that are happening in space. And last year, we talked about TESS 
as it got launched to space, and now it's completing its first year of its mission. NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, has discovered over two dozen extrasolar planets and captured data data on other astronomical events occurring in the southern sky during its first year of science operations. Those events are like flare stars and eclipsing binaries and white dwarfs and even supernova. TESS began hunting for exoplanets in the southern sky in July of 2018 while also collecting data on other phenomena in its line of sight. And so far, it has discovered 24 exoplanets ranging in size from about 80% of the size of Earth to planets that are as large or larger than Jupiter and Saturn. TESS also has identified over 850 candidate exoplanets that are waiting for confirmation from ground-based satellites. Dr. Natalia Guerrero, a TESS team member, said the team is currently focusing on finding the best candidates to confirm by ground-based follow-ups, but there are many more potential exoplanet candidates in the data yet to be analyzed. So we're really just seeing the tip of the iceberg here. TESS has only scratched the surface. In July of 2018, TESS snapped clear images of C2018N1, a newly discovered comet, in our solar system. In 2019, astronomers also used data from the mission to identify transits by exocomets orbiting Beta Pictoris, the second brightest star in the constellation Pictor, about 63 light years away from Earth. In the first test sector alone, observed between July 25th and August 22nd of last year, the mission caught dozens of transient events, including six supernova in distant galaxies that were later confirmed by ground-based telescopes. Astronomers hope to use these types of observations to better understand the origins of a specific kind of explosion known as a Type IA supernova. Dr. George Ricker, a TESS principal investigator, said the pace and productivity of TESS in its first year of operations has far exceeded our most optimistic hopes for the mission. In addition to finding a diverse set of exoplanets, TESS has discovered a treasure trove of astrophysical phenomena, including thousands of violently variable stellar objects. On July 18th, 2019, just a few weeks ago, the southern portion of the survey was completed and TESS turned its cameras to the north. When it compete, completes the northern section in 2020, the spacecraft will have mapped over three quarters of the sky. And just recently, TESS found a hat trick of three new worlds. TESS um, found these one slightly larger than Earth and two of a type not found in our solar system orbiting a nearby star. The planets straddle an observed gap in the size of known planets and promise to be among the most curious targets TESS has found. TESS object of interest, TOI 270, is a faint, cool star um, about an M-type dwarf star. M-type dwarf star. It's about 40% smaller than the sun in both size and mass and has a surface temperature about one-third cooler than the sun. The planetary system lies about 73 light years away, still in that southern constellation of Pictor. The innermost planet, um, TOI 270b, is likely a rocky world about 25% larger than Earth. It orbits the star every three and a half days at a distance about 13 times closer than Mercury orbits our sun. Based on statistical studies of known exoplanets of similar size, the science team estimates that this planet has a mass of about 1.9 times greater than Earth. Due to its proximity to its star, planet B is an oven-hot world. Its equilibrium temperature, that is the temperature that's based only on energy it receives from the star, um, is around 490 degrees Fahrenheit. The other two planets, C and D respectively, are 2.4 and 2.1 times larger than Earth and orbit the star every 5.7 and 11.4 days. Although only about half its size, both may be similar to around Neptune in our solar system with compositions dominated by gases rather than rock, and they likely weigh around 7 and 5 times of Earth's mass respectively to C and D. All of the planets are expected to be tidally locked to the star, 
which means they're like our moon. They only rotate once every orbit and keep the same side facing the star at all times. The team hopes further research may reveal additional planets beyond these three. If planet D has a rocky core covered by a thick atmosphere, its surface would probably be too warm for the presence of liquid water, which is obviously considered a very key requirement if we're looking for potentially habitable worlds. But follow-up studies may discover additional rocky planets at slightly greater distances from the star where cooler temperatures could allow liquid water to pool on their surfaces. Tess is always finding new stuff. It's so cool, and that's why we talk about it a lot right on this science segment, and I encourage everyone out there watching and listening to go to nasa.gov and always check out the new mission parameters that are in data that's coming back from Tess and all of the exciting missions in space that NASA has going today. 